Uh, let's speak to David Clark from Positive Money UK, who joins us now. Hello, David. Hi. Um, I'm guessing your answer is going to be no, but do you welcome a cashless society? No, we don't. The, the thing to understand about a so-called cashless society is that it means that we're in, become completely reliant on banks and card companies to manage our money and make payments, and that creates all kinds of problems. There's certain people who are excluded because they don't have access to a bank account. Um, it means that we're likely to face higher charges at higher prices at the till because card companies will be free to push up prices once their remaining, the only real competition is, has disappeared. Um, and it makes the whole economy more less resilient because um, we're all at risk when those banks experience a financial or technological failure, as we're seeing more and more. Uh, how does that work? Sorry, I wonder if you could unpack that a bit for me. Why will it cost us more at the till because of uh, no competition? I don't, I don't understand that one. Oh, so really cash is the only... Cash is the only real competition to Visa and MasterCard uh, in terms of the way that we pay for the, um, the things we need. Um, and so Visa and MasterCard are really keen to get rid of cash because then, you know, they already, Visa already has a 97% share of debit cards issued in the, in the UK. For example, um, cash is the only remaining real competition to those card companies. Once cash disappears, they'll there'll be nothing stopping them um, hiking the charges on... Um, oh, on I payments. see. And they charge, just to put all the pieces together, they charge the shop and the shop will pass the cost on to the uh, end user, I guess. Is that what you're saying? Exactly, yeah. Um, isn't it more convenient, though, and therefore more efficient to use electronic payments? For some people, it may be, but the, the key thing is that we should have the choice. Um, the, the problem with what's happening is it's being driven by the interest of banks and card companies. Banks have pushed for a reduction in the amount that they pay towards the cash machine network, and that's really the reason why we're seeing cash machines <clears throat> or free cash machines closing at such a rapid rate. Um, so it's really important that if, if we want to protect our ability to use cash, and I suspect a lot of your listeners, um, like most people, use cash on a regular basis, then we need the government to step in uh, to put a stop to these free cash machine closures and ensure that we can continue to have choice about the way that we use our money. Isn't the future, though, and, and people have been able to pay now with things like PayPal on their mobile phones, isn't the future that we, we're just going to blip, blip devices or blip, blip an electronic uh, card or implant uh, across a scanner and, and pay so easily that it actually becomes physically simpler than carrying cash? People are always predicting that um, we're going to we're moving to a, a society where everybody is just using electronic payments all the time. But that it, that's really not the reality of most people's experiences and most people's preferences. The amount of the demand for cash is actually rising. Um, we polled people and, and found that 77 percent of people say that access to a free cash machine is essential to their lives. The problem is, you know, it's a convenient story for certain private interests like the big banks to say everyone is just keen to um, stop using cash as quickly as possible. But that's actually not the experience of most people. What's an easy way, David, that we could fund more free cash machines? How could it be that we can get more of them? So at the moment, the cash network is, is primarily funded by fees paid by the big banks. Um, you've got to remember, like, 10 years ago, we bailed out those banks um, when they got into difficulty, and we continue to give them billions of pounds of subsidies every year. We should say to the banks, it's part of the deal. If, we're, if they're going to carry on getting this cushy deal from the taxpayer, then they need to you know, provide the money for these basic banking services like free access to cash, which actually really doesn't it's, – it's about a billion pounds a year to operate the whole network, which is a – a small fraction of the profits the banks are making every year. So um, it served us very well to have a free cash machine network that is paid for by the banks. That should continue. But in order for that to happen, we need the government to step in. High street banking is not that profitable, though, is it? I mean, it's free in this country, whereas in many countries you have to pay to bank. Uh, and the cash machines have been free and they've funded those uh, through fees. And, and their only way of making money is through charges, which they've been, they've been hounded on now. I mean, I, I know I'm probably a voice in the wilderness if I sound like I'm feeling sorry for the banks, but they do have to be in the black, don't they? They do have to make ends meet themselves. I mean, as I say, like... Um 
you know, banks are still, they're very profitable businesses. They're still getting, they've got this huge privileges granted to them by the government, um, by the taxpayer. They essentially receive, it's like tens of billions of pounds in implicit subsidies every year. Um, we should say as part of the deal, they should continue to provide these basic services to people, keep, keep branches open in communities which rely on them, um, provide people with free access to cash. Great to speak to you. I really appreciate you coming on the show today. That's uh, David Clark, who's Head of Policy at Positive Money UK.